。你们好，你们好。好，我我姓于，姓于，从外面来的哈。从外面来的。对对对对。我是检查学校，这检检查这个教学校。是是是是是，对，看看能能不能帮帮一点什么事情。哦，能不能帮一点什么事情？这想帮你们看看，把学校搞好一点。学校搞，学校暂时倾向在两个城好搞。嗯嗯。学校在这个两个城好。嗯，你们哈了吗？你们是哪的？呃，我从美国回来的。从美国回来的。美国来的，对。你们的小孩都上学了吧？嗯、上学了。都上学了，嗯，读了几年？几年级了？你的？读了几年级？你的小孩？三年级。啊、嗯，在二的初中。哦，有几个小孩？四个，四个，啊、哦哎，哎呀，四个哈、哦，哎，一个了，哦，是男还是女？有三个女孩，一个男孩。哦，那那个男孩宝贝了，哦，男孩宝贝了，<笑>男的是还很大，男孩是很乖。对，男的是最小的，男是最小的。哎、哦、呀，那最开心是他了，<笑><笑>生了三个女的，哦，还没有男的，生一个男的，哎呀。The Zegan Fund is an organization that's dedicated to people-to-people -people assistance, and also that advocate people-to-people -people assistance. Zegan Fund is a non-governmental organization. Its goal and mission is to support China's poorest urban areas in the basic education, or to direct support for poor students. Its activities have been going on for many years in China, especially in Guizhou. Guizhou is a very successful city. Now, its activities are in the southern four or five cities. 这是现在的发展，这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在的发展。这是现在
And then since I was in United Nations um, from 1975, at the time you, the, the issue, development issue, become very prominent. At that time, there seemed to be uh, on the intellectual level uh, rethinking about poverty. Uh, and so there seemed to be consensus that development is really a, is a world historical thing. If you happen to be located in a certain position in the, in the worldwide configuration of a power relations, then you're in trouble. You're handicapped, okay? For instance, if you are a colony, a newly independent country, then you do not have the infrastructure. You cannot attract a lot of resources. So. Ostensibly, it is fair game. If you work hard, people want to come here to invest, and you become more prosperous. But then, all the money, most money, would go to the place where there's already infrastructure, where there's a more promising place for investment. So, in the end, the development turns more lopsided. The rich place, the rich countries, rich societies become richer, and the poor, more backward place, will lack more behind. And that's probably you can look at the statistics, you can prove that. Because the world historically was so interlinked anyhow, because the rich countries got to be very rich, it has something to do with the, the poor countries who stayed rather poor. So this idea of a, you know, it's a collective responsibility for development. In the United Nations, there are also different headquarters in Switzerland, Geneva, in Rome. I didn't study either in Rome or in Vienna. There's somebody who were inspired by this principle of sharing resources, of promoting resources flow into developing countries, into where it is very much needed. Some of the staff members, they formed this organization called 1% Fund, proportionately, you know, because some people make more money in the work as assistant secretary general, some people make less money in the work as typist. But in general, you know, you take 1% out of your gross income, uh, you donate and pull the money together. So the idea is that you form this kind of small foundation. Whenever, you know, some people find that there's this crucial need that can be met by a small amount of money, whether, you know, to build a well or whether to do some experiment project about, like, uh, energy-saving stoves. And then every month you have a meeting, you know, you receive some of the requests, you know, from all over the world. So I, I became also a member of the 1% Fund. I think this idea is pretty neat. So maybe we can borrow this idea and maybe do it in China specifically. We start talking about it in 86, 87. That's how it started. In 1988, when we first started the Zigan, then I went to China. I went to Guizhou. It's my friend introduced Guizhou is one of the poorest provinces. That's very accidentally. I was on the airplane from Beijing to Guizhou. Then I met a guy. He was sitting next to me, Mr. Luo. And he asked me, why do you want to go to Guizhou? I told him about our organization. I told him we would like to work with the peasants. But up to that time, I haven't seen any peasants yet. He said, you just come with me, okay? because I organized a peasants training workshops in a very remote area of Guizhou, in the Tongren. It's about eight hours train ride from